uh, record it. And I'll put the slides, um, let's just see if this actually runs. And I put, this uh, I put the video on, um, on the stand. I uploaded it uh, through this tech relay system. So I guess you know how to access it. Yeah, do you? Have you used it before? Okay, I, I can try and find out and uh, share you a link. Um, okay, so today is going to be, um, I'm going to talk about uh, the Bash uh, scripting language and so, yeah. Hopefully by the end of today you'll know what Bash is and you'll know how to program some uh, Bash scripts. Um, but before we start, um, some admin, some organizational stuff. So some more course information. Um, reminder: if you have not done it yet, um, please sign up to Piazza. So Piazza is our knowledge platform, and. Um, I will basically, uh, you can share information, you can ask questions, you can answer questions. Um, our teaching assistant and myself are going to are active on the platform to answer questions regarding assignments and other organizational stuff. Um, also, I will announce course updates. Um, so for example, news like um, the video recording is typically discussed on the Piazza forum as well. And so the link is on the web page, but I also put it in the slides again. So uh, please don't forget that. Um, yeah, that's all. Then assignment one is was published last week, and um, we actually enrolled all the people on the waiting list. So f and for that reason, because they started a bit late, I also decided to extend the deadline to Friday. So the deadline was supposed to be today, but uh, you actually have time until Friday. Um, and so the first uh, assignment is just to push some files to GitHub. And um, so please make sure that um, you have your personal private GitHub repository, um, and you can visit this URL here, where you replace um, UIO username with your UIO username. And on that web page, you should see the files the solution files of that um, assignment. If, if you don't see anything here, then you haven't pushed your solutions correctly. Okay, are there any, has anyone got problems regarding all this GitHub signing up procedure and, and uh, or is that everything is good? Okay, um, yeah, one. Are there optional admin classes, do they give uh, perks? No, no, it's because we can't check if you done them correctly or not. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, so the optional exercises is just, I actually recommend them because you um, running into Git um, um, merge conflicts is quite a common um, thing. It happens quite regularly and it, if it reckons, if it, it's really nice to practice it before that you know what you have to do. So if it happens on a real repository and you're about to lose information, then it can be quite stressful. But if you, if you know what you're doing, then it's actually quite easy. Um, yeah, did I, want, did I want to say something else here? Um, no, I think that's all. Okay, so the next assignment is also online. Uh, assignment two, you find it on the web page, and um, the topic is bash scripting, obviously. And yeah, so I should actually double check. So um, the, the solutions of the assignment should also be in a subfolder called assignment two. I'm gonna double check that I've actually stated that uh, in the assignments. Okay, but um, with that, let's start. So today's topic is basic uh, bash programming. And so bash is a Unix shell. Uh, it's one of many Unix shells that you can choose, um, but it's, kind of, it's one of the oldest ones and it's one of the ones that is being used uh, the most. So Bash originally um, is, is an original uh, scripting language um, that basically comes with an operating, um, with the operating system as a command interpreter. So basically if you start Linux and you open up a term terminal, the first thing that you're being faced with is a Bash terminal. And um, it's actually not the, f Bash doesn't, it's not the first version, there was something uh, before it was the born shell, and it was the first major shell that was distributed. 
Uh, and then after that, there were some improvements. So there was the C shell and the T C shell. Um, but uh, actually, the Bond shell, or BASH, as we call it, is the one that uh, made it, and it's the one that is mostly used nowadays. Um, and then, so yeah, and so from the Bond shell, um, there was an improvement made by the uh, GNU and the Free Software Foundation. Um, and that's what we now know as, as BASH. And that's basically the, the interpreter, the command line interpreter that you find when you have a Linux installation or even a Mac computer. So there's some more modern BASH uh, versions. One is called Dash. Another one is Corn Shell or Set Shell. Um, but BASH is even nowadays the dominating Unix shell uh, today. So one comment here, Dash is actually quite common now in Ubuntu systems. So the default command interpreter in Ubuntu systems is, is um, Dash, um, which is almost compatible with Bash, but just for you to be aware. Okay, so why should you learn Bash? So uh, first of all, um, the learning Bash is learning Unix, and uh, Unix is quite uh, common nowadays. You find it on every Mac and every Linux computer and even on your Android phones. Um, it also means that you, you, it's really the, the root of scripting. It's one of the first scripting languages. And we will see that Bash might feel a bit clumsy first, but you, you can see how the scripting languages have evolved. Um, but um, w another reason is because these Bash scripts are actually being found all across your, your operating system. Um, so many of the commands that we ex execute are actually um, bash shells. So it's really good, uh, bash commands. So it's really useful to, to know about them. And um, even today, as I mentioned, um, bash is extremely widely used and, and one of the most commonly found interpreter on, on your operating systems. So typically, if you write a shell script, there's a sequence of um, there's a natural sequence that's happening. So first of all, um, you have a task that you want to perform, and the task consists of a sequence of commands, and you just place the sequence of, of uh, commands in a, in a file. Right? And already that is a bash shell, so just a sequence of uh, command um, that you execute. And then after some time, um, you want to uh, you start using this, um, this task more often, and maybe you want to add some command line arguments that you can uh, generalize it a little bit. Um, and so that's, the next, that's typically the second step. You add some command line arguments that change the behavior of your script a little bit. And then later on, maybe you want to introduce some uh, variables in the script uh, to make it more powerful even, or make check, have some if tests that the inputs are valid, for example. Uh, you, and maybe you even want to introduce some loops uh, to allow some more complex uh, program flow. And by doing that, the script will uh, um, go and go and will become more complex. And at some point, um, the script might become too complex to, to be a normal bash script. And then that's the time where you, where you should go ahead and maybe re-implement uh, your, your simple script into another scripting language, uh, for example, Python. Okay, but so generally shell scripts are most often used to glue uh, together existing uh, scripts. So maybe you have a bunch of Perl scripts or Python scripts or maybe C programs and you want to glue them together and, um, and make them work together. Okay, so um, in your operating system, so if you have Mac or, or Linux and or this uh, Sigwin on Windows systems, you basically have access to uh, typically at least two shells. Um, the first one is um, installed in slash bin slash sh, and that's the classical uh, born shell. Um, or you have this uh, slash bin slash bash, which is the uh, bash shell. And so you can basically run a script either with this thing or with this uh, command here. So for most of the programs that we do, it's actually um, sufficient to just run it with bin sh. But for some feature, you might actually need the bash shell. And then you have to uh, run it with bin bash. So um, if you're on a Mac, 
actually this slash bin slash sh is just a link to the to the bash shell. So in fact, if you call bin sh, then in fact you're actually calling bin bash. Um, on Ubuntu, this bond shell is actually not the classical bond shell, but a, but instead uh, links to the dash shell. Um, which is, as I mentioned before, it's a minimum. It's a, another implementation which is smaller but much faster than Bash. But if you want to be sure that you're running Bash, uh, that you're running a script with a Bash shell, then you should always run it with slash bin slash Bash. Okay. So where do you find information about um, Bash? So maybe the problem about inform information about Bash is that there's it's so old there's I mean, there's an incredible amount of information that you find both offline and online. And um, offline, so if you type in a new command shell, just man, man stands for manual bash, then you will get the offline um, documentation for the bash shell. And then here, just uh, three, um, three references that I find quite useful uh, for bash scripts. But um, yeah, feel free to look over them, um, but Google will help you. Uh, for specific problems um, basically every single time because there's there's so much material out there because it's such an old shell. Okay, so if you're faced with a problem, it's often quite good to know uh, when you should uh, use bash or maybe when you should try and avoid bash. So when is, in which situation is, uh, is bash good? So first of all, if you need to do file and directory management. Maybe you have many files and you want to um, find uh, certain files, files with certain attributes and delete them. Or maybe you want to rename them in, many, uh, in an automatic fashion or move them uh, and so on. Um, bash scripts are widely used for system management. So for example, if you're compiling programs or if you yeah, um, publish and maybe you're uploading programs to another computer and so on. Um, then it's really useful if you want if you want to combine multiple scripts together, uh, multiple commands together. So we, I'll show this um, later on. And then obviously um, rapid prototyping of more advanced scripts. So that's a um, consequence of combining other scripts. So you have loads of scripts that do one thing, and you combine them to do something more complex. And then you can also use the shell the bash. Um, um, the best shell to do very simple output processing and plotting, um, but the focus here is on very simple. So very quickly you will hit the limits of what Bash can do. Okay, when should you not use Bash? So first of all, um, uh, cost from portability. So a Bash um, script, if you share it to, some, to a Windows user, he will typically not be able to execute it, right? Because except if he installs Sigmin. Um, then in general for graphics and graphical user interfaces, it's possible, but it's very, very limited. Um, yeah, so you can interf interfacing with other libraries. The legacy code is quite uh, difficult. Also, if you want to do more advanced uh, post-processing plotting, or if you want to do complicated calculations in mathematics, uh, Bash is not, the it's not a good option. In these cases, you should really change to another scripting language like Python or maybe even a compiled language like C. So here are some common tasks um, uh, for Bash. So we want to, typically, we want to write into files. We want to, um, do, we want to make for loops. We want to run an application. Um, you're going to learn about pipes. So pipes allows us to um, to pass information from one program to the next. You will learn how to write functions. You will learn about file clopping. i uh, explain later what this is. You can check for file types. And then here, system management, so copying and renaming files, creating and moving directories, creating directory paths, removing files and directories, and so on. We will learn how to uh, traverse directory trees. So that's extremely useful if you want to perform an action on every file that is in a directory. And you will learn how to pack uh, directories. Maybe you want to email them to your colleague um, and you need to pack an entire directory. 
So here's your first uh, Hello World example for Bash. Uh, these two lines. Um, so the first line just tells us that we actually it tells um, our operating system that we are running a Bash script. And this is basically it tells the operating system, okay, if I execute the script, please execute it with the interpreter slash bin slash bash. Right? If you put something else here, you could, for example, try putting slash bin slash dash, then it would run this uh, script with a, uh, with a dash um, shell. If you typed in slash bin slash python, it would try to execute it with a python, and that would probably fail, right? because it's not a valid python program. And the next line here is um, the bash command for outputting something on the screen, and we're going to see hello world. So there's two ways how you can execute the script. So you've uh, stored into a file, and then you can obviously just type in these commands um, directly in the command shell. Uh, yeah, so sorry. So the first option is to you ty just type this command here in the command shell, and then you will see the output hello world. Or you save these two lines as a, as a file and then um, make this file executable. So there's a Unix command called change mod plus a, a plus x. So this means that uh, it should become executable. And then you provide the file name. And once you've done this, you can just run the script with dot slash and then the name of the script. And then it will execute uh, the lines above. So we can make this uh, Hello World example a little bit more complex. Um, so the only thing I've done now is that I've introduced a new variable. So this is how variables look like uh, in, in Bash. And then I can substitute this variable in the string that I output. Okay. And so the result will be, of course, again, we will see Hello World on the screen. I can see if I might actually have this. Okay, so here's another example, um, even more complex example of a line counter. So here, uh, this is just, you don't understand, you don't need to understand all the lines quite yet, but this just gives you an impression on how we can write a bash script that counts the number of lines in a file. Um, so we provide a file name, we, um, we declare a variable here, and then we, down here we have a loop where we loop through all the lines of the file and in in increment the counter. And at the end, we just output how many lines the file has. Okay, let's um, go into details. So in Bash, we have um, Bash variables that you can uh, um, define. And so you don't actually need to um, declare a variable um, before you use it, you can just um, write in a program x equals 3.4, and then after that, um, Bash will have a new variable called x, and then you can retrieve the value of that variable again by using the dollar sign. So you can just type in dollar x to get the value of the variable x, or an altern alternative syntax is dollar curly brackets x curly brackets. Okay. So this is what I showed you before in the hello world example, where we retrieve the um, variable, the value of the variable x and, and outputted it. So we can also pass in variables uh, as command line arguments to the script. And these are called position parameters. And I'll show you examples later on. So bash um, comes in with a number of built-in commands that you can use straight away. So the, these you can, um, you can uh, see if you type in help uh, or help um, vertical line less, so this should be in one line. So then you get an overview of the built-in bash commands. Um, but actually, bash by itself is is maybe not that powerful. The real power comes when you when you combine bash with all the Unix commands that you have in your on your machine. So down here I have an example. So this is this is one line. It's a one line bash script. And it actually gives you the weather forecast of, of Oslo um, for the next uh, three hours. Right? So 
This seems to be quite a complex operation, but actually, so what we're doing is we're downloading the um, a web page using the curl Unix command. Uh, then we're searching in that web page for lines that contain the word temperature and extract only the first um, finding of that. And then we cut out the relevant information that we want. And so I can demo that for you. Okay, this works again. Yeah. So here's my little weather forecast program. It's just this uh, one line. And then when I run it, this is what I get. So the temperature is currently 70 degrees. It feels like 70 degrees. And it's for the period from 11 o'clock. So um, variables in Bash are untyped. So um, generally, so that, that's as we've seen before, we don't actually specify which type X has here. Um, so generally, Bash treats everything as a array of characters. So even if you type in X, uh, yeah, X equals hello, it will automatically become a, um, an array of character. But you can actually perform simple operations um, using variables. So if you have a variable that contains uh, the string two, you can actually multiply it by two or by three, and then you will uh, actually get the result six. So this is quite useful because you don't, or it's very um, useful because it uh, allows very rapid prototyping, but it can introduce subtle bugs. So for, for example, you, maybe you're expecting a variable to be, be an integer, but for some reason it, uh, um, the user provides a, um, uh, a string instead or a non-valid integer instead. And so for that, in some cases, it might actually be useful to specifically uh, state that a variable should be uh, an integer. And so Bash allows you to do that by using um, the declare command. So if you, if, so this line here creates a new variable i, and it forces i to be an integer. So if you're trying to do something uh, to put in some a non-integer non into i, to assign a non-integer to i, it will just ignore that command. Or here you specifically state that the capital A variable should be an array. On here in the last line, this is a read-only um, variable. So if you try to overwrite r, it will fail. So then we can um, use the echo command to um, output uh, variables to the screen. So here, for example, we have a variable s equals 42, and then we use the echo command to output the string. The answer is, and then here we have a variable in the string, and that's being, that will be substituted. Right? So instead, we will see the answer is 42. So there's some um, variables that are always um, um, available in your shell script. And these are the command line arguments. And they, will be, they can be accessed by $1, $2, $3, $4, and so on and so forth. Right? So if you, if you start your shell script, and you, so you have the shell script name, and then you have a space, and then you add another command line argument, you can access it using these um, dollar variables here. You can also get an array of all the command line arguments with dollar um, add. And you can check for the number of command line arguments with a dollar hash. Another um, variable that you have access to is once, once you have executed a program, if every program uh, in Unix has a return code, and the return code is zero if the command was successful and non-zero afterwards. And so this return code can be accessed with this dollar question mark. And that's often very useful. So you run a program, and then after that program, you can make it a test, an if test, if the program was successful or not, and maybe print out an error message if something went uh, wrong. Yeah, there was a question on the back. Uh, where is the line okay, so, yeah, that's a good question. So, I open up the terminal again. So, here, 
if I just call my weather forecast um, like this, there's no command line arguments, but now I can add additional arguments to the program. So I pass additional information to the program that will, can potentially change the behavior of the program. So I give you an example. The command ls just prints out the line, uh, the, the files in my current directory. Um, the command ls takes command like arguments. For example, it takes a command line argument uh, minus l, and that changes the behavior of the program. If I call it with ls minus l, it will show me a long version of the uh, a long version of the files in my in my directory. Another example is um, is rm. rm deletes a file, right? And so if I just call rm by itself, it will actually tell me that I'm missing a command line argument. So instead, I need to call rm with a uh, command line argument, which is the file that I want to delete. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you can have um, tests. You can have if tests and bash commands. So um, the syntax is written down here. One thing you have to be aware of is that the test that you actually perform is different if you compare integers or strings. So here in the first example, we compare two integers um, and check for equality. In the second example, we compare uh, two strings for equality. And so be aware that we use minus eq e for integer co comparison and double equal for string comparison, okay? And so um, in, in some way it's, b so you, should, you can only use integer comparison if you, if you really know that your double, uh, your dollar i variable is indeed an integer. So if you declare the, if declare w i a dollar i explicitly as an integer. In all other cases, it's important that you do the string comparison. So generally, as an advice, it's often um, useful to just wrap both cases here, uh, both arguments to the comparison into double into double quotes to make them strings, and then use the normal string comparison. So the explanation mark equal compares uh, checks for not equal. Um, and only if you really show that you talk that all the variables are integers, then you can use this <laughs> integer comparison. And so the example down here, right, this is unsafe because we have an integer on the right and we have a variable where we're not entirely sure if it's an integer, integer or not on the left-hand side. So this might be an unsafe um, if test. Okay, so when you're debugging, um, when you're debugging an uh, a shell script, it's often useful to know exactly where it crashes. And there's, a, there's an argument that you can pass to the bash shell, uh, minus x, that will, um, that will result in bash printing out the line that it's about to execute before it executes this. So you basically always see, uh, when you run the program, you, can, you will see the line, uh, the command line that is about to execute, and then you will see the result. And that will make very clear where the program starts crashing. So if you, if you don't really understand where your program uh, crashes, just add this minus x um, on the top of the file, or call your script with my, uh, slash bin slash bash minus x, and then the file name of the script, and then it will give you a lot more information when you run it. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, and if you s as you've seen in this weather forecast, really the power of, of Unix and of the shell comes when you combine uh, multiple commands. And they're typically quite um, simple commands that Unix, Unix provides, but if you combine them, you can uh, build very powerful uh, programs. So, um, in principle, in Unix, the, the theme is that um, Unix provides you with quite basic uh, bash commands and Unix applications, and they do one thing, and they try to do it really well. So you have 
You have a command for finding files. You have one command for replacing text. Uh, you have one, for one command for uh, move, moving files and so on. And so basically what we do in bash scripts all the time is that we run one command and we take its output and we pass it as an input to the, to the next command. So we kind of, we build a sequence of commands and we connect them using so-called um, pipes. So, um, yeah, so th there are actually two ways how you can combine commands, but as I mentioned, the first one is pipe, is a pipe. A pipe sends the output of one command and uses it as an input to the next command. So here the pipe is a vertical line, is indicated by a vertical line, and we have this ls minus l command here, as I, sh I showed this on the command line just a second ago. So this lists the files in the CAM directory, and we pass the output to the grep command. <laughs> the grep command filters lines uh, that contain the keyword 3331. And so this command combined will show me all the files in my current directory that contain the, the word 3331. Okay? Um, so yeah, that's one way how we can combine commands. Another one is by storing the result of a program as a variable and then passing it in to the next uh, command. An example is shown down here. So here we create a new variable called time and these, uh, these, uh, this syntax here on the right hand side means execute the, tells, tells the shell to execute the command date the command date and the shell just prints out the current time and date. And so we will execute this command date and store the result in the variable time. And so now, for example, we can um, print out the, we can print out the variable uh, time again and we will see the current time and date. An alternative syntax to this dollar round bracket is to use these um, single quoted, single right quoted, um, um, a character as, as shown here. Yeah, so these two lines are equivalent. Okay. <coughs> so here's another example how we use um, pipes. So um, in this example here, I have, um, I again want to show all the directories in my current directory, but I also show the size of the files in the first column. And then I pipe this information to the sort uh, command, and that will sort the files uh, according to the file size in reverse order. So with this command, I will see my files with the largest files, I think, on the top, and then the files, the file size will go down on the bottom. So this is very useful if I want to find out what are the biggest files in my directory, for example, and then I can delete them. Another example is here, is shown here. So I've got this program oscillator, and this program oscillator takes in a, um, ta takes in an input some configuration options. Um, but I don't want to type them, so basically if I just typed in oscillator, I would have to type, type in, in the keyboard um, these configuration options. But I don't want to do that, so instead I just pipe in the information. So I use the cat program, cat um, outputs the contents of the file. So I have a configuration file called slash case i, and I use the cat program to, uh, to print it out, and then I, and I pass it into the oscillator program. And so that way it allows me to automatically run this oscillator program with the configuration that I've stored to file rather than having to type it in myself. So this is actually the same as the, the next line here shows a similar, it uh, shows an equivalent syntax. So I could use this left arrow here which is a, is a redirection, and I will explain in the next slide. So you can even um, use pipes multiple times, so this is shown down here. Um, so in this case here, we will show the, this first command shows the, the size of directories in, in, a direct, in a root directory root. Then we will pass it uh, to the sort command to sort it by uh, Sorted in, uh, sorted in, um, in their file size. And then we pass that again into the less command, which allows me to 
um, go up and down using my keyboards, uh, using the key arrows. So less if you have, if, you, if your command outputs more information that fits on the screen, you can pipe it to less, and then with less you can go up, scroll up and down using your, your, your keyboard. Okay, so that was pipes. Uh, the next thing uh, we will learn is redirects. So every bash program uh, outputs, um, outputs information to what's so-called the standard output. And typically, um, the standard output is just printed out to screen. So if you, if you type in echo hello world, um, you will see the hello world on your screen. But you can redirect uh, this output uh, to other to another file, for example. And that's shown up here. So here I have the command echo hi werden, and normally this would appear on the screen. But using this, um, these brackets here, I can redirect the output into a file. And so after I've um, executed this command, I will have a new file, and the new file will contain, contain the word hi werden. And then after that, I can, for example, um, so this redirection also works the other way around. So rather than outputting something into a file, I can also use the file as an input to a program. Right? So here this WC um, stands for word count, and it counts the number of words in a file. And as an input, I want to use the, the file myfile.txt. Okay? So redirection both, wor both works for redirecting files into a file or redirecting a file into a program. And um, just as a remark, we can actually re-implement um, this redirection using pipes in maybe not such an elegant way, but just that you see the, how, it, um, how it connects together. So what we could do is we could, if you want, so imagine we wanted to pipe the output of POC1 into POC2. The way we could do that is we, um, we store the output of POC1, POC1 into a file and then after that, so this just means if the first command is uh, successful, then execute the second command. So we store the output into a file, and if it was successful, we use that file as an input to the second uh, program. Right, so this is how we can re-implement pipes using redirections. Okay, so I mentioned before that um, all the output is, um, uh, yeah, that, um, we output stuff, we, uh, programs output uh, things and we can redirect them, but it's actually a little bit more subtle. Um, every Unix program actually outputs in two different um, channels, you can, you can say. The first one is the standard out channel. Um, this is where normal output ends up. And then the under, other one is called standard error, and this is where error messages uh, end up. And by default, the normal redirection operator only redirects the standard out. So if you run your program and the program actually fails, these, the error message, uh, if, you, if you run a program and you, uh, you redirect the output to a file, then you will only see the standard output in the file. And if the program fails, you will actually see the error messages still on the screen. But um, you can use these um, number, um, you can, uh, these uh, channels are numbered, so the first channel is the standard output. So if you only want to redirect the standard output, you can also write one, um, one bracket um, as a redirect. If you only want to redirect the standard errors or the error messages, then you can use the two bracket. And if you want to redirect both standard in and standard out, you can use the keyword and bracket. You can even redirect standard out to standard air, so that everything ends up in standard air. And you do that by one bracket um, and two, and also the other way around. So we can redirect standard air to standard out. So we can also, in our program, we can actually also write into standard air. So by default, when you use echo, it writes into standard, uh, standard out. But if we want to write out an error message, then we can use syn this syntax here um, to print something to standard uh, error. 
And so these redirects and pipes can be combined. So for example, if we, if we have a compilation program that compiles our program, and we want to see both the standard out and the standard error message, messages, we use this uh, redirection. And then we pipe that output into the less command so that we can comfortably uh, read the um, output of the compilation step. Okay, um, yeah, I think let's just have the break now and let's start again at um, 11 past.